I think anyone who winds up at a clearing in the busyness of life, whether by necessity, class assignment, or choice, discovers what a sobering place it can be. To use the Wikipedia definition, that clearing is a place where your normal operating system can become unavailable to you. It's a place where your customary way of doing things can crash so that you fail to provide or perform your primary function, which gives you the rare opportunity to rethink what your primary function is. Is it to make A's? Is it to make lots of money? Is it to fulfill everyone's expectations of you, to rise to the top of your profession, to finish your to-do list? What are you doing here? Since I harbor a secret desire to take over the writer's almanac when Garrison Keillor retires, <laughs> here is my poem for the day by Mary Oliver. Who made the world? Who made the swan and the black bear? Who made the grasshopper? This grasshopper, I mean. The one who has flung herself out of the grass, the one who is eating sugar out of my hand who is moving her jaws back and forth instead of up and down, who is gazing around with her enormous and complicated eyes. Now she lifts her pale forearms and thoroughly washes her face. Now she snaps her wings open and floats away. I don't know exactly what a prayer is. I do know how to pay attention how to fall down into the grass, how to kneel down in the grass, how to be idle and blessed, how to stroll through the fields, which is what I have been doing all day. Tell me, what else should I have done? Doesn't everything die at last and too soon? Tell me, what is it you plan to do with your one wild and precious life? The Summer Day by Mary Oliver. Once you decide to spend some time kneeling down in the grass to pay attention to that grasshopper, then sooner or later you are bound to discover the difference between downtime and the sacred art of stopping, which is something like the difference between a mall and a sanctuary. There's still plenty to do at a mall. When you spend your downtime there, all you're really doing is swapping one kind of busyness for another with all the same distraction, noise, and hustle. If, on the other hand, you know a place you might be willing to call a sanctuary, whether it's at the foot of a waterfall, in a carol at the library, a corner of your own bedroom, or in a house of worship like this, then you also know why stopping there might qualify as sacred. Where else are you going to hold still long enough to hear your own heart beat? not because you're hooked up to a heart monitor in an emergency room wondering if you'll make it or not, but because you decided to stop earlier than that, when there was still time to entertain fresh answers to the questions of who you are and why you're here. 